Hello everybody and welcome back to Chit Chats, the podcast, you're chatting with me, Red Skull Tier. Today we were talking about a game developer's rant on a skill-based matchmaking. Boy. The failure of modern skill-based matchmaking is that it's designed to maximize perfect match scenarios, and they minimize the others. When it's working, a majority of games become super tight, super stressful, and that's not fun for most players. So where exactly is the variability? is a tweet made by Max Hoberman in regards to an article defending skill-based matchmaking. Max Boy. Hoberman, former multiplayer online and UX design lead for Halo 2 and Halo 3. Ooh, this guy's better know his shit then if he's former designer of Halo 2 and Halo 3. Writes this tweet. Oh I see God. mention of the skill-based matchmaking component I designed for Halo 2 and 3 on this site every so often. It's usually mentioned reverently. But then an outlier jumps in to claim it can't work today. Totally I could. disagree. I disagree the too. ignorance here is infuriating. Mm -hmm. In response to this article mentioning skill-based matchmaking is an algorithm that groups players of similar skill level together for more balanced matches. Yes. When it comes to fairer games, why is there any controversy? Well, coming from an actual game developer, when I implemented cleanly divided the space into ranked and unranked matchmaking playlists. Ranked filtered opponents based on level. This right. was for when you wanted a competitive match. But even then, I intentionally allowed a variability in the range of levels we matched you with. Yeah, in order so that even if you were high rank, you would still get uh, put with people in the same rank or relatively close to the same rank. You would still get put into the same rank with people of different skills just so that you weren't Constantly going and get sweats and then getting stressed out and then dropping the game altogether, right? And this is an important point because yeah. without variability, when we match mm -hmm. players that are just fairly evenly skilled together, it makes matches more stressful. Yes. Which it he does. writes, why not always evenly match people though? Mm. My reasoning was that these are actually the most stressful matches of the set. 100%. Sure, they're the most fun to watch for spectators. Games come down to the wire. That's because the team that wins is the team that outperforms expectations. Of course. And if we're constantly matching people up of similar skill level over and over again, all they're going to be is stressed out all the time. Yep. People have to adapt to the environment they've been forced to play in. Being stressed out all the time, having to play sweaty. If you check the Dead by Daylight content creator Twitch streams, you'll probably notice that a lot more people are playing sweatier more than ever before. Because the and I don't blame them because the way they went with the game, requiring kills to be the main thing, of course people are going to sweat it out to get kills, and of course people are going to sweat it out to survive in order to escape, right? Because when the survivor escapes, that means they won. If the killer gets three kills, they won. Okay, you don't have to go for the fourth, but if you get three kills, you win. If you get kill two kills, it's a tie. Right? That's just how the game works. So, of course, you're going to want to do the most uh, meta, the most efficient way to get at least three kills per game. Which means that because you're doing it that way, you're playing in that certain style, you're not only ruining the game for everybody else, but you're ruining the game for yourself over time. Because you're going to be so used to that play style and so used to... Uh, that one line direction that you're not going to have anywhere else to go, right? And you're probably not going to want to go anywhere else because it's like, why would I play a competitive, well, not competitive, but while well, it is competitive, why would I play a competitive PvP game to lose, right? It doesn't make any logical sense. And that's not your fault because when there's skill based matchmaking, if you don't bring in the meta builds, then you're probably going to lose because you don't know if you're going to go up against the meta. Or if the SBMM is going to be a little nice to you today and put you in with some potatoes. The only way to have fun in a matchmaking system where everyone is always stressed out is to play harder, play sweatier, go for yes. win streaks, tunnel, tunnel, camp, camp, slug, slug, non-stop. Yes. Non-stop. Which is a paradox when we scroll down into the article mentioning that skill-based matchmaking prevents people from queuing into an unrelenting meat grinder. Full of sweaty teens hopped up on monster energy and lack of experience in the real world. That's the guy that asked nobody what he's talking about. 
Facing off against players with a similar level of practice is a good way to ensure that you're all going to have the most enjoyable possible experience. Skill-based matchmaking is a necessary part of maintaining a healthy player base, and it prevents hardcore players from going on power trips, where they go on a 50 to 1 kill-death ratio in FPS shooters. That's also a lie, because skill-based matchmaking actually incentivizes that exact thing to happen way more. The reason why that is, is because people will start making Smurf accounts. They'll start making new accounts or there's something that you can do with a VPN. I don't know what that is, but apparently there's something you can do with a VPN to get bot lobbies. But anyway, people are going to start making Smurf accounts. They're going to just remake an account, rebuy the game, and they're just going to dominate that way instead. They're going to make a clip about it. They're going to do that as many times as they can on that profile. And then once they can't do that no more because SBMM has caught up to them, they're going to drop that profile, make a new one, do the same thing over and over and over again. So by making this SBMM in pub lobbies, you're ironically making it worse for the casual players that are going to get stomped because of people that want to post 50 plus games or like nuke games where in advanced warfare, let me show you huge freaking trend where the most popular thing to do was to smurf and get into bot lobbies. Let's just watch up someone real quick. Like these guys might as well be bots. Look at them. Look at how they play. Someone's throwing a grenade right there. No one knows is that this person's actually shooting on the map. They don't even look at the mini map. They might as well just be bots at that point. They are not skilled players. The vast majority of the people on the other team, like look at this. Look at this scoreboard. Can you see that scoreboard? We got one dude going 25 kills. We got these other two dudes that are clearly higher prestigious. Two and three, and zero and zero. Okay. And this is the max prestige at one point. And it's like, or, uh, yeah, the, like not the max prestige, but like the max level 50 level of that first prestige. So you got two other people in here that are prestige that suck ass at the game. You got this other guy who is just 0-0, zero zero, apparently. You got a level 227. Like, that's his whole team. Then you got all of these guys down here that can't even get a fucking kill. And they're playing like bots. And there was skill-based matchmaking in this game. That's why this happened. So this really good player made a Smurf account to dominate all these other guys and ruin it for these guys. He just ruined it for his team, too. Because he's the only one having fun by getting 25 kills just to post a clip. This one is not legit. This is a, a thing full of bots. Full of people that don't know how to play the game. This guy's got 90 kills, 79, and then 30, 25, 34. All these guys on this team suck. And this one dude and his one other friend in a party ruined it for everybody else in this lobby. Except for maybe that guy. Maybe these other three guys. But, like, that's it. Okay? Ruined it for every everyone else in the party because he decided to make a Smurf account. And I know it's a Smurf account because these this emblem is not the same as that. He just got to level 50 and that was it. Like this is this is his Smurf account. He's not going he's not going to proceed any higher than what it is right now. Okay? For that specific reason. So we can get a few clips and then make a new profile, do it all again. This is what I would expect a lobby to be like for someone that's going for a legit nuke. You you got to carry your one team because your one team sucks ass because I get this thing all the time every time I play by myself. My team just sucks enormous amounts of ass. And the other team is just good. And I got to carry my entire team because they all suck ass. And skill-based matchmaking is like, here you go. Deal with it. So this is this is legit. Like, if I look at a scoreboard like this, this would probably be a legit fucking DNA bomb. Even now in Dead by Daylight, the popular thing to do is to make a Smurf account. So that you can do those stupid pallet juke things. Those stupid 360 turns. Because those things are not going to work on a on a on a good killer, a good like just mod, not modern, but like a good thousand hour killer, maybe even lower than that, maybe like five hundred, but somewhere in the thousand area, it's not going to work on them. Okay, the killer basically has to be fresh out of the box for a three sixty to even work, unless they don't realize that they have to turn the sensitivity up. Then that's different topic but now if skill-based matchmaking prevents all of that why when it comes to dead by daylight content creation 
All I see these days are win streaks. Today exactly. we're doing the second episode of 50 wins. 50 win streak. 1,000 kill streak. 826 Which games in a row. I also believe the win streak is bullshit, by the way. Because even, people have to set, like, certain rules so that there's certain rules in place where you simply just can't lose, right? So I tried to look at the rules earlier, but I couldn't find it. I'm not even going to bother. But, uh... The last time I heard about um, win streaks was there was certain like certain situations. So like if a survivor did something specific, that doesn't count as a win. Uh, I can understand letting a survivor escape through the hatch, but to me like that's not a win streak. Your win streak is 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 gone. You sh it should be just four kills. That should be your win streak is four kills. Uh, I can understand why that would be annoying, and I can understand why that would be a rule. But there was also something, there was many more things to it that I completely forget because this was, this is when it first started. So how it is now, I'm not a hundred percent sure. If someone wants to explain the rules of how the actual win streaks work in the comments down below, that would be much appreciated because I can't, I can't find it. Bro, with each killer on Wesker. But getting this many wins, especially a thousand wins, I find kind of bullshit. Like this shouldn't even count as a win. Did this count as a win? This shouldn't count as a win because you didn't even you didn't even get the game to go. Like this should count as just a just let it go. You know, it should just count as like not a loss, but also not a win, right? Because you kill one person, and everybody else DC'd. That shouldn't count as a win, but it also shouldn't count as a loss. Like with Nuss. It almost so. feels like it went from content creation focusing on meme builds, highlighting crazy moments. It did. It was a good time. Perk roulette. I bring it up all the time. Perk. Perk roulette. I actually have it myself. Perk roulette, dead by daylight. Monto with his perk roulettes. This random perk roulette was crazy eight months ago. Oh, hey, someone's still continuing the tradition. Three years ago, eight months ago, three years ago, one year ago, six months ago. That's actually pretty good. Five years ago, three months ago. Also, oh wait, this perk. Never mind. That's not a. That's not a perk roulette. And the reason why this was popular is because you wouldn't have to go against constant meta sweats all the time. You could actually let loose and do a little perk wheel, do something fun, right? 86 videos, this thing was really popular to do. And I still like doing it, and I would do it if it didn't have skill-based matchmaking. That would punish me for not playing the meta. Changes right now. So let's go ahead, click on the perks, and hope for the best, baby. Come on. Daddy oh, needs a new Oh, they pick. have an actual, man, that looks so dope as shit. Shoot. Windows of opportunity. Ooh, that looks cool as hell. I wish I had that back in the day. But yeah, I mean, even I did perk less. It was fun. It was a fun thing to do. To only sweating, only doing wind streaks, yep. tunneling and camping more often, no matter how many base kit changes we do with an anti-camp feature and nerfs to gen regression, nerfs to gen progression, people have to adapt to their environments. And well, from a top-down but... level, from veterans to casual players, these sweaty, stressful matches aren't just exclusively played at the top level, but also the upper mid, mid, and lower levels as well, mm. where the game's identity yeah. becomes yeah, mid. You see, how, you see how the chart is a curved, is a curve, and it curves back down, right? So it's just, it's not like, like, you're still sweating, like, maybe around here, but like the guys who are just above you are sweating just a little bit more than what you are right here. I would assume casuals like maybe here and backwards. Okay, because you're going to start getting good players around here that actually know how to play the game. If you want a casual experience, it's going to be like right here and back. So you're, that's why they make a Smurf account because that's where all the new players are. That's where all the like basically new players are. Yeah. Lower levels. Well, the people that are just really, really bad at the game. Right. As well. Where the game's identity becomes a sweat fest. Those guys, yeah, but those guys quit because they don't want to play against the Skull Merchant. Like, Game's identity. And look at their builds, by the way. They got Prove Thyself, Prove Thyself. Decisive. Like, they have really good builds, but they just don't want to go against this killer. So they all DC'd. Sweat just sweat And that's the only type of content that can exist and thrive. But Coconut, why can't you just make meme content and just do meme builds, make crazy plays? Well, because people become yeah, what they consume. Yeah. When a normal player is put within a sweaty, stressful environment 24-7 every single day, mm -hmm. they become the embodiment of that. Mm -hmm. Anything less of the sweaty, stressful gameplay experience is inferior content. Hence, less meme builds, less fun content, less casual content, and more hardcore content, competitive content, 
oh, maybe our community wants competitive play. No, you're nope. creating the environment of which where that is the only type of community that you can manifest. Yep. But let's go on. What I implemented cleanly divide the space into ranked and unranked matchmaking playlists. Ranked filters opponents based on level. This was for when you wanted a competitive match, but even then, I intentionally allowed variability in the range of levels we matched you with. This <laughs> variability was a topic of hot debate internally during development 20 years ago. Obviously, no one wants to be stomped continuously. Obviously. On the flip side, it gets dull for most it does. people. Continuously stomping others. Yeah. However, That's, it for is some people, it really doesn't. Some people don't even care. The time. By intentionally mm -hmm. allowing a range of skills to match together, we provided three experiences in ranked matchmaking an easier one where you can kick butt, a harder one where you're likely outmatched, and an evenly matched one. My theory was that a good mix of these three was ideal. We're currently living in a universe where every match is a harder one where you're likely outmatched yeah. or an evenly matched one. Yeah. When players constantly and play... You, and you might get like a little bit of a break where they put you in where it's like a bunch of people that don't really know what they're doing. So it's kind of easy, right? In Dead by Daylight at least. I don't know about other games. Uh, Call of Duty, I would not expect that. But in Dead by Daylight, sometimes they'll put you in a game like that one game where I had in that live stream where there was a, literally a noob. Like that person did not know how to play the game. And she got pulled with other people who knew how to play the game, and they all backed out because she was clearly a noob. So a stressful match. But sometimes the game just throws you a little bit of a bone like that, just just to keep you hooked, though. But just to keep you hooked, keep you buying stuff. It doesn't work with me because, like, I know your bullshit. After another stressful anyway. match, another stressful match, another stressful match. Yeah. Where is the catharsis? Loss after loss There's after a loss. It's like, why am I playing this game? A pressure over and over and over again. Yeah. To the point where people feel like they need to take a break playing Dead by Daylight. Mm. And, and that brings me to the point where people say it's healthy to take a step back from playing the game. Which is true, and that's probably why the people on my friends list that are playing Dead by Daylight have shrunk dropped. It's true to an extent. People treat games like it's their job. And they don't have a job outside of the game that they're trying to treat as a job. And I don't mean content creation, because even content creators don't even play the games that much, okay? Because they, they have other stuff to do outside of the gaming thing. Taking a break from a game is one thing. Taking a break because your health depends on you taking a break from that game is completely different. Games that allow them your to mental feel health, that sense I would of say. relief. But, but when it comes to our game stressing people out, mm -hmm. why aren't we designing a system that also provides that sense of relief? If the only emotion that players feel is sweat and stress... You can imagine how they feel within a month time period, year time period. Yeah. They'll eventually quit your game, yeah. which is also the reason why a lot of... And, and when you put them in that kind of stressful situation, they're more likely to get headaches because of how stressed out they are. They're like, I don't want to go fuck. I don't want to play this fucking game. I get headaches every time. Every time I stop playing for like two, three hours, I get this massive headache and I have to go do something. Like I have to go, I have to, I have to actually go lay down because of the massive headache that I'm getting. Right? Just from playing this one game for like two to three hours. Massive headache because I'm so stressed the fuck out. Like, why? Why would I want to do that? Content creators are quitting the game. There yeah. is a lack of heartbeat where there's usually an up, a down, a midpoint, an essence of variability, mm -hmm. where the essence of Mother Nature is a mimicry of real life. True. And when our game lacks that relief, that catharsis, that release of stress, that we're constantly feeling all the time, we end up pushing people away from our game and killing our core player base, yes. which is exactly what's happening right, right now. now. Yes. I don't think it's too late, but something obviously needs to be done about this. Mm. Content creators or legions of devoted fans just to regurgitate the same views. Their argument is that there's something inherently unfair about grouping skilled players in matches with other skilled players, but that's quite clearly ridiculous. It's like supporting a football team, where one team is getting pummeled and clearly outmatched. This kind of sounds similar to a certain game developer that compared Dead by Daylight to hockey. 
Oh, uh, no. Skilled play inherently leads to kills or escapes. Think about sports, and I'll use hockey as an example because I'm Canadian. Yeah. You wouldn't say the only count wins when placing teams in the standings, but they should also count shots on goal too. A more skilled player takes more shots. I think we did a pretty good job so far. We forget to mention that sports are competitive events that people watch to they see are. the best of the best face off for a prize pool of money. Mm -hmm. Now, when we take that sentiment to comparing video games to sports and stretch it over an entire video game, it gets to the point where every match feels like people are playing like their life is on the line. Like this. Tw Once thought of as a party game, we encourage folks to play like their life depends on the game. Uh, I don't count PvP games as party games, even Super Mario. Party. Mario Party, not Super Mario. Even Mario Party is not a party game, okay? Just because you can play with four players does not make it a party game. You know what's a party game to me? Animal Crossing, Minecraft, Roblox could be a party game. The Tail on the Donkey, that's a party game, sure. Pokemon, where you can, like, go online and, you know, collect Pokemon with, with people. That would be a party game. I guess maybe Power World would be something like that, I guess. Basically, PvE games, I would classify for the most part, as party games. PvP games are not really party games. You look at Monopoly, okay, the board game, even people take that shit seriously, okay? And there's, like, legit strategies to win most of the time when playing Monopoly. Even chess is not really a party game. Maybe checkers, but even then, it's still not really a party game. I mean, it's still competitive in nature. Like, you're still trying to win. So, but in Animal Crossings, what are you trying to win? You're just there to... To, to, I don't even know what you do in Animal Crossing. I just know that there's animals. You can, like, have a picnic and stuff. It's all, like, it's all, like, fun stuff, you know? Fishing. You know? I don't know. Building, farming. It's not my kind of game. I'll tell you that right now. Anyway, <laughs> Animal Crossings, right? Stuff that you can do with friends and have fun that's not really competitive is, is a party game. You know those Halo 3 uh, custom game modes? Those are kind of, like, party games pretty much in a way that would be a party game i would say you know you're just there to have fun you're just trying to shoot you got three people trying to shoot one dude riding over a bridge i mean that's kind of fun there's no it's not it's not like you're trying to win something right whereas in mario party you got stars that you're trying to win right in that game you're just trying to stay alive and not die and have fun <laughs> that's all you're trying to do so there's certain elements to make it something a party game dead by daylight is not a party game just because you can join up in a party of four players on one side by the way does not make it a party game it is a pvp competitive pvp game people are playing like their life is on the line like this yes. twenty thousand dollars at stake it's often an argument point that i see people complaining about how every match feels maybe like a competitive... i have i have not played dungeons and dragons but dungeons and dragons could possibly be a party game i i don't know I don't, I don't play it, but that could be something. Moment where everyone's sweating over and over again, and it feels like that way Stuff like for that. a reason. Due to the lack of foresight for a player having fun and the name of game-wide fairness. Yes. But fairness does not necessarily mean fun. The system I designed for ranked playlists ensure a healthy mix. Sure, it sucks watching your favorite team get their butt kicked in, but it comes full circle when they're the mm -hmm. ones kicking butt. Throw in tight, evenly matched games every so often, and that's a ton of fun. It's... Like the heartbeat analogy I once mentioned, yep. a constant rhythm with ups, downs, mids, and lows is fun because yes. of the essence of variability to have stressful games sometimes with a little relief. Yes. I haven't even gotten to unranked playlists yet. I designed these to not factor in skill slash level in the search of opponents. As they should be. As they should be. Yes, our engineers utilized the same code base and kept skill slash level as a search criteria, mm -hmm. but we substantially deprioritized it in matchmaking. As it should be. Which Choi also mentioned as to one of the reasons why the lights out modifier didn't feel fun. Because behavior enabled skill-based that. matchmaking for it. When in comparison to they the My that. Little Oni, it was predominantly more fun. Even though it was way easier to die, you could imagine My Little Oni as a game mode where people are just popping all the genders instantaneously and escaping, making less okay. people want to queue for killer. 
Got or it. the Oni constantly slugging for the 4K That's in boring. a casual, fun game mode yeah. just because he wants to get four kills every match. Yeah. It would have greatly reduced the enjoyment in the modifier. 100%. We also didn't track skill slash level globally, only per playlist. The net result was that unranked matchmaking allowed a very wide range of skill levels to match together for what everyone agreed was casual, inconsequential fun. Again, that's the way it should be, in my opinion. Yes. Since the natural skill level distribution of players follows a bell curve, there are outliers, inherently low skill and high skill players. Characterizing the high skill ones as sweaty teens hopped up on monster energy is really disrespectful. It is. And to be honest, this article is probably made by someone who's just projecting their insecurities. 100%. And has likely never been at the high skill level. To 100%. The point where if this journalist was a game developer, they would likely mm. infantilize a video game in the name of righteously making the game more fun for casual people, yep. while tone deafly making the game worse for everyone. Yep. Segregating high skill players from the population at large, forcing long wait times on them is a form of discrimination. True. Designers should strive to find a way that players of all skill levels can have fun together. Yes. Casual, inconsequential, unranked matchmaking is one way. Of course, and that actually happens, by the way. That does happen from time to time where you'll have people that just they come in and uh your team is not very good it doesn't matter if you're in a party of four or not but uh, like if you're playing with someone else you know just pretend you're playing with someone else um you and your buddy just sitting there having a good time you know and uh the enemy team's out here dominating you talking shit all that stuff and then you stay in the lobby after and uh the next game you win against that team even though they were just talking smack, right? What's the difference? You might have got better players than what you had, sure. Or you actually learned how they, um, what they do and how they operate most of the time. So, for example, you probably, ha if they're like rush the bombs, if they rush the bomb site, you'll know that they rush the bomb site. They like to rush A a lot. Should probably go camp A, have someone on B just in case, right? Or if they like to just kind of, stall around run around and try to just kill people then you're gonna want to probably camp i don't know about camping somewhere but you're gonna want to try and find a way to counter that you might want to put up like i'm just gonna make call of duty as an example in modern warfare 2 because that was the most fun for me playing search and destroy uh the og modern warfare 2 uh for so for that you would want to i would anyway i would use one of my army i would put down claymores and i would put a c4 on top of that claymore and i sit in the corner with a rash shield go ahead and rush me bitch <laughs> try i like to see you try <laughs> Right? So like because of because of the way people played, you would have to make different builds to counteract their play. You were you were essentially learning, even though you're pissed off, but you were essentially learning. And sometimes not all the time, but sometimes those interactions can lead you to getting more friends of that friend group. Like some of them will actually add you as a friend and want to play with you after. Okay. Does it happen all the time? No, because some people, when they're in a squad, that's usually their squad. Like, that is their squad. That is their, you know, doing whatever. So, but there are higher chances of you finding people to play with of, of all skill level, right? Of all skill levels, you know? Whereas when you're in a sweat group constantly, if you're not good and you suck ass, they're not going to want to play with you. They're just not. Because you're like, you're handicapping them in a way right and it's just they just don't want to deal with that i dabbled with handicap settings and asymmetric game mode oh, design that's as interesting <laughs> game devs shouldn't take the easy way out and default to segregation though there's far more that can be done derogatory views like this among game developers is a cop-out and a disservice i didn't read i didn't watch this, by the way that was just Pens mentioned <laughs> a player who dug into the game's code that dead by daylight has individual skill brackets mm -hmm. as you win more matches you get to a higher skill bracket after ranking into this bracket, there's also a loss prevention system in place that prevents the player from immediately dropping back out, even if they <sighs> lose multiple matches in a row. That's what I tried to do in, in Dead by Daylight. Was I was I went to the forums and was like, all you gotta do is just lose a lot, just just play Bubba, go in the basement, 
you might get one kill, just lose a lot. <laughs> more Let them games escape. you play, the better you get. The more you mm -hmm. get locked into the highest skill bracket. Yeah. This type Dead of by Daily doesn't even have that. I wish they had that. Where it's like, this is your skill bracket. You know, from 0 to 1600, you're in like 1250. This is your skill bracket, right? Segregation is being utilized by the Dead by Daily game developers. And the name of making the game more casual and fair. But mm. Mm, why is our community playing competitive, even though... We designed the system to be more fun for casual players. No, it's, it's interesting how the game went from basically being casual to slowly being more competitive, even though they're trying to advertise it as casual. It's so weird. It doesn't make oh. any sense. What that must mean is that people want the game to be competitive, which is likely the reason why Behavior has started doing sponsored tournaments and events. Because also, they only see also, having tournaments and esports stuff in a game that's supposed to be casual and people are treating it like a casual game, putting this stuff in it does not help you make that casual. That only brings up more competitive uh, egos. See the symptoms of their decision making. Yes. Not the root problem and cause as to why people feel this way. Eventually, over time, though, casual players may become filtered out due to the game being too stressful and we'd only be stuck with a competitive sweaty try hard player base homogeneously and if that or or let's go back to that chart or you might see competitive players again start making more murph accounts to try and stay in the bracket of this lower area that's deliberately harming all the new players and all the people that want to play casual you see how this just forms up eventually when you get up here and you play and you play your best of the best of the best Eventually, you're going to get tired of that, and you're going to want to end up back here somewhere, right? You're going to want to end up back here. So, the competitiveness won't... T I don't know how to explain this. The competitiveness won't decay. But as more competitive people leave, those people that remain will eventually start dropping off into these lower brackets. Okay, which will force either uh, competitive players to leave, which, I mean, if they're already leaving up here, then they're just gone, which will probably force, in the long run, casual players to leave, because now the competitive players have nobody to play with or against, because the small bracket of competitive players is quitting because they don't want to play the game anymore. They don't want to keep constantly sweating, constantly using meta, and, and have boring matches all the time. So eventually that will be uh, a trickle down effect into the casual experience and then eventually all the casual players that are going up against these competitive players constantly those are going to start leaving back to back to back and eventually it's going to just go all the way down just like this right so it's either that's going to happen or it'll be a it'll be a i mean to be honest even if that was to happen and you have people making smurf accounts i mean that together would ultimately just squish squish the entire thing all, all together like that's just going to make us you're just going to make a sandwich right there so the game by putting in sbmm the game heavily relies on new people coming into the game to keep this part right here fresh to keep this part right here fresh and then eventually when those people get good they're going to weave out all the other casual players and it's going to be a rinse and repeat that's what they're i think that's what they're trying to get is a rinse and repeat of new players kicking out the the dedicated players and then eventually letting those guys leave to kick out the casual players and then trying to bring in new players all that all that stuff i think that's basically what this graph shows okay so your game is now heavily relying on bringing in casual new players and hoping that the core main people stay away from those players because you don't want to lose your money money basically because all the casual players spend a lot of money due to the game being too stressful, and we'd only be stuck with a competitive, sweaty, try-hard player base yes. homogeneously. Yes. And if that's the case, if we've reached a point of no return, behavior at that point might as well just make a 5v5, where there's a team of one killer, four survivors, versus another team of one killer, four survivors. Have map bans, have perk bans, have killer bans. Wait, do so you want this group to go against this group? And if this person can kill these people faster than he wins, is that what you're saying? I don't know. This might be a DBD tournament thing. And I don't know anything about DBD tournaments because I think they're fucking A, boring to watch and B, 
we all know what happens. Like, there's a reason why they gotta eliminate 90% of the fucking perks, like, 10% of the fucking maps. Like, we all know. And fully commit to making Dead by Daylight a competitive game. It's entirely risky, could, come back, could backfire completely. That's why I believe Behavior should probably just bring back the emblem-based or rank-based matchmaking. They can't. They can't bring this back because this... what. What happened was it was the same thing before SBMM. Basically, the rank system was a was an SBMM without actually adding SBMM, right? That's basically what it was. So it would be like the bronze gets stuck with the bronze. I'll just show you. I think most of these guys would be grouped together. Maybe even this right here. I think most of these would get grouped together. But these two, maybe these even these three would always get grouped together. So, I mean, back, I mean, eventually it was everybody. It didn't really matter, but it's like... At some point, they did do a, an SBMM thing with the rank system where only certain ranks would get matched with certain ranks, and it is what it is. And then they added SBMM. However, uh, it, most of these guys in rank 1, if you can even see that, you can't. You can even see that. Most of these guys in rank 1 were waiting because there wasn't enough people in rank 1 or even these ranks to even fill it. So they were waiting in queue times. So this is the best rank system to have in a, in, if you want a more casual experience where all you had to do was just go around and fill up these four bars by just doing stuff in the game. And this was basically performing actions and getting blood points and then if and then like that was pretty much it basically. Just performing act, actions in that objective, filling up the bar and that bar would also count towards the points at the end of the match right here so this would be basically what you did the entire match and that would be your blood points going into here that's basically what it was it was a very simple very easy thing to do i wish they would have kept that they don't need to bring the emblem system at all but here it is you don't need this progression stuff where you could you could either uh go up you can go up and down right because that's also going to make people want to do certain things and play in a certain style because they don't want to go down they want to end the game with as many uh what is it like gold gold iridescence whatever it is whatever the second one whatever the whatever one whatever the one is before iridescent i'm pretty sure it's gold but i forget they want as many golden iridescent emblems as they possibly can because they want to get at least a two pip right now in order to two pip you need all of them red but Whatever, I digress. That worked previously. People liked it. And players just kind of want some... I didn't. I wasn't a fan of it. Even when it was announced, I wasn't a fan of it. Good old-fashioned casual fun. So this was a Halo game developer's critique on the failure of modern-day skill-based matchmaking. I have to thank Choi for finding this and pointing this out. I'll leave a link to his channel Damn. and the video he uses to cover this exact same topic and behavior. Oh, please. <laughs> We've been tackling this problem from all angles, psychological, scientific, and now even coming from the mouth of another game developer. Yeah, from a Halo 2, Halo 3 dev, by the way. The, the, like, those two games were the best games. Like, you had Call of Duty, Call of Duty, sure. But Halo 2 and Halo 3, oh my god. If you weren't alive for those days, you missed out. Actually, you can just buy it on Steam. The Master Chief Collection in Halo 4. Oh, you get Halo 4 too, look at that. Uh, Halo 4 I didn't really like, but... Halo Reach I also didn't really like, but I played a lot of SWAT in Halo Reach. I love SWAT. SWAT. I love SWAT. It was good. Yeah, I walked around with a pistol. This is how good I was eventually. <laughs> it, was, it was a good time. Anyway, I don't know if the multiplayer is alive, but like, you have to play Halo, Halo 2, and Halo 3 multiplayer. Like, 100%. True, dude. I like that. Yes. Yes. Have, have, have some money, bruh. Next. Give reward. Just take it, bro. Just take it. Oh, my God. Skill-based matchmaking probably needs to go. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. For every game. But maybe you guys have a better solution. Even if... Oh, hold up. In the form of modifiers or something. We'll see. I hope you understand why a lot of people are complaining about the current matchmaking system. Yes. It's not because it's 100%. Now, there are people that actually want to kick noobs' butts 24-7. That's just because they have... They're just fucking weird. But... uh. Most people just don't want to go against sweats the entire time. That's that's what it, that's what the majority of the complaints come down to is that even though you don't want to come home and face sweats constantly, even though you weren't facing const sweats constantly before, um, people really like like myself included really don't want to come home and face sweats constantly after working an eight hour shift, working like thirty five hours a week, right? Thirty five, forty, fifty hours a week. Like I just I just don't want to do it. And then I to get stressed out and have headaches the entire time. Like it's just not fun. That's why that's basically why I don't play 
uh, competitive games anymore that much. Uh, I'll still play like, well, I still have stuff in here. Like I'll play Rainbow Six. That's pretty chill. But other than that, no, not really. I, I, I avoid them at all costs. Now I play survival games because they're more chill because I have more fun in survival games coming home from an eight hour shift. Okay. Even though I like competitive games, even in Modern Warfare 2 lobbies, like the, the best player in the lobby was this guy. The worst player in the lobby was this guy. Okay. And what it would do, it was, it was, it would take this guy. He would be on one team. He would be A, B. I want to say we go A, B, A, B, but it doesn't because even this system has a little bit of separation. So like it might go A, A, and then B, B, right? It could go like that. It could go A, B, A, B. Like this system was, uh, even though it looked relatively simple, it was a little bit mixed up. Okay. So even this system would be good because the whole point of, well, not the whole point, but basically when I was playing one over two, I wanted to be on the top. I wanted to be the guy with the most points. So that's what I would, that's what, always what I would do is I would always try to be the guy on the top and I could talk smack to everybody else on the bottom because they're on the bottom and I'm on the top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want to have competitive mode, you need to have a rank mode. Okay. I was against dead by daily having a rank mode. Cause I was like, it's going to split up the community. But after experiencing skill-based matchmaking, I really think that you need to have a, every competitive game should have a rank mode. They don't need to have tournaments. They don't need to have esports because that's taking it to a whole nother level that we just don't need to go. Just ranked and pubs. That's all you need, really. That's all you really need. Just ranked and pubs, right? Um, taking it to this esports level puts in a whole different mindset where people feel like they they have to play the game twenty four seven. They want to get good. They want to go compete in esports for money. They want to make a career out of it. That's where stuff starts becoming a problem. Okay. Re funda really like not even fundamentally, but like really, like it really becomes a problem. That's pe when people start taking games as a job more seriously. That's ultimately what it comes down to. Not today, but at some point in a separate video, we'll react to the toy guy, separate video, and we'll see what he says. But if you enjoyed this video, I got disconnected. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, okay. Comment down below. What you think should skill based matchmaking be in the game? Should it be taken out of games? Let me know what you think. Uh, I think that they should obviously be taken out. And I'll see you guys in the next stream video thing that I do. Take care and bye bye. I got nightmares in my head. I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature. And it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I've been feeling weird. I can't seem to focus good enough. Nothing's really clear. Sometimes it could be a little.